All right, so today we're going to be talking about singletons inside of Godot. And we're going to be doing this to be able to make it so that we can actually get access to a player within, well, basically everything. Why are we doing this in the first place? Well, right now we kind of have a workaround inside of our enemy. And if I open up the script, you'll see what I mean here. When we're setting up the player, we're getting the parent to something, and then we're getting the child in position zero, aka this one right here, because this is position zero, one, two, three, four, five. This just isn't the best way to do anything. Say something like this happens, where simple is above player, all of a sudden, all of our enemies are going to be shooting at the static body right up there instead of shooting at our player. So, in order to fix this, we're going to need to be able to find the player in a simpler manner. So, let's go ahead and do this. Let's create a new script. We're going to call it global. So, you see down here where it says res and it says new script.gd. We're going to instead write global. Dd on here. We're going to hit create and then we're going to double click on the new file that we created down here and we're going to delete everything underneath extends node and then we're going to make a new variable called player inside of this. Easy peasy. Now we're going to go to project. We're going to go to project settings and we're going to click on auto load up here in the top. Two spaces to the right of the input map that we were using earlier and we're going to take the path on here. We're going to take the global.gd. We're going to double click on it. You're going to see that it says no name global. We're going to hit add. You're going to see singletons already enabled and we're going to close. You're going to see what that does here in a little bit. And now we're going to go to the player script by clicking this little script button next to the player's name. And then we're going to go down, make a new function in the ready. And we're going to simply set global, and you'll see global pop up, dot player equals self. Now what self means is it's this specific instance of the player script that's going to be run off of the node that is currently running. All right, so this is a pretty good opportunity to kind of go more in depth in the structure of GD script and how it works. All right, so this is a bit of a later version of that same tutorial that you're currently watching, so don't mind the stars and everything. Each one of these things that are inside of here right now, for instance, the player, the background, all this canvas layer, these things are all instances of the stuff that we've created. And what an instance means is that it is a separate iteration of the thing that we've created. So you might have like a blueprint. You can think of the script itself as a blueprint, but an instance is one incarnation of that blueprint. A kind of example of this would be like human beings. There are many, many human beings out there, right? And I am a human being specifically. My name is Alvin. I'm an instance of a human is what it is. And every separate human is its own instance. And we can have our own differences to us. In our cases, we have lots of differences. In scripts cases, not so many. But you can have differences. In this case of the player, we can actually have different accelerations from scene to scene. If you look over here, where it says Excel. So basically, there's a script. And this script can have multiple instances of it. So when I say, like, you're going to be using the self. You're using one of the instances. You're not using the script itself. So I hope that kind of makes sense of that. So the next thing that you really need to know is, and the reason why I went over the instances thing first, is how scenes and nodes work. So we have multiple scenes, right? And we travel from scene to scene, and there's even scenes within these scenes, right? And all a scene is is a collection of nodes. So here's the, each one of these gray boxes represents a scene. So if we have these kind of bluish boxes represent nodes inside of each one of these scenes, you'll see that they're kind of contained inside. Now the thing is though, the node that's in here isn't inside the next scene over. So when we're traveling from scene to scene, and you know, going from level one to level two or whatever we're doing, we're not actually dragging that stuff over. And sometimes we need data across all of these things. We need data that's just kind of universal. So right here, you can kind of see how all these things are self-contained within each one of their scenes, which is why we use this auto load to kind of contain things over here. And everything has access to the auto loaded node right here. So it's automatically loaded into the game and kind of run in the background. So instead of having it the way that it is right now, you actually end up with something like this. The auto loads kind of there in the background and everything else kind of runs on top of the auto load. 
And that's what we're doing in this video. That's what we just did when we created that global script and we pushed that auto load. We had it so it's kind of running in the background all along and it never stops running. So you can carry on variables like score and lives and all the other things that you might need to carry on from scene to scene. Now, if we go over to the enemy script, aka test shooting, and we expand that one out, and then we're going to, instead of saying player equals get parent get child, we're going to simply set global dot player as the variable of choice there. We're going to hit play, and now they're all going to be shooting at the player again, because once again, the player, well, we have access to them instead of a variable, a much simpler variable. And there we go. We've used the singleton pattern to, to give ourselves access to the player no matter what script that we are inside of, creating a much simpler approach to what we were doing before. I think that's it for this video because I want to keep these things somewhat self-contained in terms of new concepts that we're going over, even though this video is a bit shorter. So I hope that you guys liked the video. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below. Most importantly, leave a comment down below. It's very, very helpful to get some feedback. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Bye.